Hi everyone, hope you're well. Um, hope you're all staying safe and looking after each other. Um, so I'm going to do things a bit differently this week. Um, I decided that I'm going to break the videos down into astrological sign, but I'm also going to do this rundown as separate, um, particularly for May because this is our monthly read and there's a lot going on in May. So obviously to kick start the month we have the Sabbath of Beltane which is on the 1st of May but traditionally you would start celebrating on the night before so on the night of the 30th. Um, so Beltane is, the word itself is an old Celtic word um, and it means bright fire. Uh, so it's a time of lust, passion, fertility and it marks um, all that um, vitality um, and all that life force of the earth and the sun. And love and commitment are huge themes for this Sabbath um, along with abundance and creativity. Um, and traditionally hand fastings um, were held at Beltane. So as well as all of that that I've already mentioned, Beltane celebrates sexual energy and co-creation. It's believed that the god and goddess would come together in a physical union at this time, having reached full maturity in their growth over the spring. Uh, the coupling essentially is there to ensure the continued propagation of life going forward. Um, so as the god will now be reborn of the goddess after he dies in uh, late autumn in the autumn equinox. It also symbolises coming together of those masculine and feminine energies, how they work together and how they work together in creation. The um, ways to celebrate Beltane, if um, you're looking for some ideas, um, you can create a wedding feast for the god and goddess, so that can include things like bread, cereals, um, or cereal grains, oatmeal cookies, dairy foods, um, and spring vegetables. They're all really fantastic ways of uh, honouring and celebrating um, that special union between the god and the goddess. Um, uh, you can also gather flowers and green leaves uh, to decorate your altar. You can make a small uh, mini maple for your altar, um, put ribbon, colourful ribbons on your altar. Uh, if you like me and you've got very long hair, you can plait it if you have the skill and capability, which I do not. Um, never a skill I've had, unfortunately. Um, and you would do this as a, a symbol of the union between the god and the goddess and if you wanted to you know make it a bit um, extra pretty you could pop in some wildflowers or blossoms from the trees and things um, so that's just a couple of ways that you can um, honour those energies of the day uh, ultimately spend some time outdoors as well if you can um, that's another way. Also, um, you can uh, light a fire. That's another way of celebrating uh, Beltane. Uh, some traditionally you would light big fires, and uh, because people would be outdoors all night. Um, and uh, even today, um, there's some festivals where um, obviously they're not running at the moment, but where you would go and you do like you go and do like jump the fire so you go and jump over the fire and that's just one way that um people are, are still celebrating Beltane to this day. Um so getting into the energies of what's going on this month. On May the fifth we have um a shift in the lunar nodes. Now uh, if you don't know what they are, they are not um a planet they are a mathematical point between the sun and the moon um, and these two nodes are known as the north node and the south node uh, the north node represents our future where we're going what we need to learn and uh, the south node is our foundation where we've been what we've done and what we're building upon so since 2018 the north node has been in cancer 
and the south node has been in capricorn so really our our main lessons have centered around our home life our family life and our jobs our careers um on fifth the nodes are going to shift from cancer and capricorn into gemini and sagittarius so this is going to set up a whole new series of life lessons in place for us um having these nodes in um gemini and sagittarius indicate that you know there's going to be a lot of self-expression and freedom of speech that's going to be a huge um, area for us to be uh, working with at the moment um so for me um for me it probably sounds quite positive for me because um i am my house sign is a uh, gemini and my ascending sign is a sagittarius so i you know um so it sounds like it's, uh, for people like me it's probably going to be quite a, a big shift coming forward for us then on may 7th we are in the scorpio super full flower moon so this will be the last um super moon of the year and it will be the third super moon that we've had in a row so following our those shifts of the lunar nodes um we've obviously got the full moon um the scorpio full flower moon is always um quite important uh, moon anyway uh it's it represents a time of transformation so the moon is full she's pregnant with all this energy um if um you're in some wiccan if or if you follow a wicca um it's very important because it symbolizes the divine feminine um it's a very high time for magical workings related to divination and protection casting spells setting intentions healing um abundance and prosperity are usually the intentions that you would be setting for this full flower moon um so if you're thinking of switching careers jobs this would be the time to ask for guidance but um obviously things are a bit up in the air but that doesn't mean you can't ask and you can't set the intention for moving forward because remember it won't happen overnight so like flowers you know it's our time to blossom so um each day we you know we're taking in all that light and the full moon symbolizes um shining um, light on our darkest days to illuminate all those dark pockets all those corners of ourselves and just allowing that awareness of those darkest places um so that you know we can transform them um the full flower moon is also there to help us um, shedding our outer skin like a scorpion would um so it's a time for lots of self-reflection and self-assessment so look into using this time for looking into yourself um for things that have been hidden would be a really good time to do that um and there's going to be things that have been hiding under the surface that are going to start to make themselves known this is giving us a chance to heal a chance to really look at ourselves in a, a new and different light and perspective um and basically a massive chance for rebirth and and when there's a chance for rebirth there's always change coming up for us don't fear these changes it's about embracing them welcoming these shifts that are coming because they're coming either way we can't control it so under the light of all that bright new moon that full moon that we've got coming forward um we're increasing the power to make changes in our lives um so it's a really important time for releasing work and creating space in our lives as well as all that transformation that's coming forward so then on may the 10th we have Saturn retrograde. It's a slow-moving planet, Saturn, at the best of times. So, um, 
so it tends to be quite sort of when it's in retrograde so um, this retrograde is noteworthy because it moved into Aquarius back in March so you know if we look back to what was going on in March um, we probably find ourselves looking back over themes that have been present since March 21st so you know we might be set to relive some of those things again as it was a big shift um, and you might already start some people are already seeing the feeling that the energy is sticky that things are slowing down for them a bit um, obviously Pluto is already in retrograde so we need to bear that in mind by the end of May there'll be five planets in retrograde so it's going to be quite um, yeah interesting it'll be interesting so then on may i say may 13th but some sources say may 12th um so anyway just after that the saturn retrograde venus um which is in gemini um enters retrograde so that's going to last until june and when it comes out of retrograde in june we will already be in Mercury retrograde, so you know it'll be it'll be fun times. Not with what coming ahead, we are definitely entering our retrograde season now. So Venus goes into retrograde every eighteen months, give or take. So because obviously it's such a long time in it in the gap between it going into retrograde. Um. It does mean that um, these are much more intense. Um, also, it's going to be very spiritually charged. We can't expect it to be quite spiritually charged. Um, so it's going to bring lots of intuitive insight, dreams on matters related to the heart. And this is due to the fact that Venus aligns in a square um, with Neptune three times. Um, so this first happens uh, just before um, we go into retrograde on May, it goes into retrograde on May the 3rd, then again on May 20th and then finally on July 27th. So Venus retrograde is really about a lot of healing and forgiveness, particularly where it comes to our relationships how um, we view ourselves, um, money, beauty, because that is where Venus, that's where her power tends to sit anyway. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of um, healing, forgiveness and reflection around those topics. Um, so if there's anything that hasn't quite been addressed by then, it's going to start coming up for you and potentially being a problem. Um, so this is your warning. Um, May 14th we are into Jupiter retrograde and that'll be in Capricorn. So obviously slowing more energies down. This is really going to be a big backtrack in lots of ways. Looking at things over and over, and reflecting. Um, it'll be highlighting themes of abundance and our feelings of prosperity so it's also going to invite us to look back at what was going on with our finances back in December 2019 <coughs> oh excuse me um, so yeah there will be um, so May is going to be a really big month for us looking at those themes then we will be hitting Gemini season um so on may 22nd um we have the new moon and you know this will be activating the new placement of the lunar nodes and highlighting the venus retrograde themes um there will be a lighter energy with it helping us to feel more motivated when it comes to starting new projects um and as we're starting to reach the end of the month we are going to start um, preparing ourselves for a new eclipse cycle so that is something for us to bear in mind so there's going to be a, a feeling of releasing lots 
um, and an end an ends coming so just for you all to be aware so also I am going to add in um, new things for this reading for the month so um, I'm going to have things like light worker of the month angel of the month crystal of the month rune of the month this is which rune uh, which runes I use um, colour of the month number of the month and goddess of the month and then I will be uh, moving on to record separate videos for each astrological sign so we will start with the light worker of the month so we have Mahatma Babaji he's the yogic father um, he's said to be over 2000 years old and has an invisible temple in the Himalayas and he's reminding us this month how our thoughts and actions create energy waves that form our in our day to day lives so just remember you can't spell action without creation so what we think do and say creates our reality so we need to be very mindful of this this month um, because of all the energies of change coming so you know if you're wanting to set new intentions in place and you're wanting to have that big change that big transformation you've got to have your thoughts feelings and intentions are right and you have to be specific um if we're too loosey goosey it doesn't tend to work um because we'll be given something we'll be given an experience that we kind of said that we wanted but it wasn't entirely what we wanted so that is um, something for you to bear in mind then we have for our angel of the month that is ambriel um, Ambriel is the angel of learning and intellectual capacity. Ambriel brings mental clarity, brings order and harmony into our thought. Therefore, he's going to be working with us to try and promote feelings of inner peace and harmony while we've got all these sticky energies going on. Um, he's a protector of psychics and uh, also works with them to improve their spiritual powers. Now, because we've got such big changes and transformations this month this is an angel i if you work in the light i would definitely recommend you calling on this month um he comes he clears away doubts um confusion disbelief fear um takes away mental fog so we're able to see situations much clearly um much more clearly um is an amazing ally if you need to make a decision if you're rubbish at making a decision um and you need to make one this is where um he really shines um show you the next step forward and you know when you're in doubt he'll give you that sense of peace and really good for meditating with as well so here we go this month our crystal of the month is hematite can i find oh, i can find a piece there we go so hematite is our crystal of the month um hematite helps to absorb negative energy and calms us in times of stress and worry um it's a very protective stone and it's great to help you stay grounded in lots of different situations it's also good for working with your root chakra health and it transforms negative energies into a more positive vibration so definitely a really good one for uh, working with this month um our ruin of the month is the earth so find a for you so there she is there we go um so this month we need to strive to stay grounded um so use this time that we have to create a daily meditation practice even if you can only dedicate 10 minutes out of your day but be sure that you're taking mindful moments during the day too so when i'm saying that that is about just you making the time to switch your focus into the present moment because it's going to help us keep calm during any times of stress because thinking about the past and uh, the future are the two things that probably rob us of our peace and inner calm most um the color of the month is color blue um and it's bringing us a sense of peace calm and tranquility it's also 
for those who are um, working in whatever capacity whether it's from home or you're actually physically going into a workplace um, it's promoting that sense of professionalism and efficiency in our work and completing our tasks um, the colour also supports our throat chakra um, which um, is centred around our thyroid gland um, our cheeks and also it helps uh, keep areas healthy like our cheeks, our nose, ears, mouth, neck, chin and throat it also um, supports processes such as eating, drinking, hearing, smelling and talking you can use foods such as fruits, soups, juices and teas to help promote um, the energy of this colour as well um, this because we're in the fifth month of the year, we are working with the number of the energy of the number five. This is said to be a prevailing number in nature and art. Five symbolizes fire and the stigmata as well. Uh, number five relates to making life choices and decisions and learning life lessons through experience. The ruling planet of this number is Mars and it relates to the planet Jupiter, which obviously goes into retrograde this month. So the focus of five is to just attain that greater stability. The law of five is freedom in action and it is very masculine and introverted. And our goddess of the month, final one, is um, Green Tara. So Green Tara is known is a Buddhist goddess. Um, she's known as the mother of liberation and represents the virtues of success in work and achievements. Tara is a meditation deity and she is worshipped by practitioners um, of the Vajrayana Buddhism to develop inner qualities, to understand outer, inner and secret teachings such as compassion, love and kindness and emptiness. Uh, Tara may more properly be understood as different aspects of the same quality as bodhisattvas are often considered metaphors for Buddhist virtues. So Green Tara herself is known for being a speedy helper who offers emergency aid, provides rapid understanding of situations and relationships and she reaches us by helping to empower ourselves. So these are the energies that we're going to be working with this month so lots going on uh lots to take in so yeah i hope you have a nice day um i will be uploading these onto youtube and hopefully onto igtv if i can and we'll go from there uh, and i'll be recording these zodiac signs as well so thank you for joining me and uh hope to see you soon thank you